Chapter eleven of the Diary of Samuel Pepys, sixteen sixty. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nicole Lee. The Diary of Samuel Pepys, sixteen sixty, by Samuel Pepys. November sixteen sixty. November first. This morning, Sir W. Penn and I were mounted early, and had very merry discourse all the way. He being very good company. We came to Sir W. Batten's, where he lives like a prince, and we were made very welcome. Among other things, he showed us my lady's closet, where was great store of rarities, as also a chair, which he calls King Harry's chair, where he that sits down is catch with two irons that come round about him, which makes good sport. Here dined with us two or three more country gentlemen, among the rest Mr. Christmas, my old schoolfellow, with whom I had much talk. He did remember that I was a great roundhead when I was a boy, and I was much afraid that he would have remembered the words that I said the day the king was beheaded, that, were I to preach upon him, my text should be, The memory of the wicked shall rot. But I found afterwards that he did go away from school before that time. He did make us good sport in imitating Mr. Case, Ash, and Nye, the ministers, which he did very well, but a deadly drinker he is, and grown exceeding fat. From his house to an alehouse near the church, where we sat and drank and were merry, and so we mounted for London again, Sir W. Batten with us. We called at Bow and drank there, and took leave of Mr. Johnson of Blackwall, who dined with us, and rode with us thus far. So home by moonlight, it being about nine o'clock before we got home. Second, office. Then dined at home, and by chance Mr. Holliard called at dinner-time and dined with me, with whom I had great discourse concerning the cure of the king's evil, which he do deny altogether any effect at all. In the afternoon I went forth, and saw some silver bosses put upon my new Bible, which cost me six shillings sixpence the making, and seven shillings sixpence the silver, which, with nine shillings sixpence the book, comes in all to one pound three shillings sixpence. From thence with Mr. Cook that made them, and Mr. Stevens the silversmith, to the tavern, and did give them a pint of wine, so to Whitehall, where, when I came, I saw the boats going very thick to Lambeth, and all the stairs to be full of people. I was told the Queen was a-coming, so I got a sculler for sixpence to carry me thither and back again, but I could not go to see the Queen. So come back, and to my Lord's, where he was come. And I supped with him, he being very merry, telling merry stories of the country mayors, how they entertained the King all the way as he come along, and how the country gentlewomen did hold up their heads to be kissed by the King, not taking his hand to kiss as they should do. I took leave of my Lord and Lady, and so took coach at Whitehall, and carried Mr. Child as far as the Strand, and myself got as far as Ludgate by all the bonfires, but with a great deal of trouble, and there the coachman desired that I would release him, for he durst not go further for the fires. So he would have had a shilling or sixpence for bringing of me so far, but I had but threepence about me, and did give him it. In Paul's churchyard I called it curtains, and there they had got a mass-book for me, which I bought, and cost me twelve shillings, and when I came home, sat up late and read in it, with great pleasure to my wife, to hear that she was long ago so well acquainted with. So to bed. I observed this night very few bonfires in the city, not above three in all London, for the Queen's coming, whereby I guess that, as I believed before, her coming do please but very few. Third, Saturday. At home all the morning. In the afternoon to Whitehall, where my lord and lady were gone to kiss the Queen's hand. To Westminster Hall, where I met with Tom Doling, and we two took Mrs. Lane to the alehouse, where I made her angry, with commending of Tom Newton and her new sweetheart, to be both too good for her so that we parted with much anger, which made Tom and me good sport. So home to write letters by the post, and so to bed. Fourth, Lord's Day. In the morn to our own church, where Mr. Mills did begin to nibble at the common prayer by saying, Glory be to the Father, etc., after he had read the two psalms. But the people had been so little used to it, that they could not tell what to answer. This declaration of the kings to give the Presbyterians some satisfaction, and a pretence to read the common prayer, which they would not do before, because of their former preaching against it. After dinner to Westminster, where I went to my lord's, and having spoke with him, I went to the abbey, where the first time that ever I heard the organs in a cathedral. Thence to my lord's, where I found Mr. Pierce the surgeon, and with him and Mr. Shepley, in our way calling at the bell to see the seven Flanders mares that my lord has bought lately, where we drank several bottles of hull ale. Much company I found to come to her, and cannot wonder at it, for she is very pretty and wanton hence to my father's, where I found my mother in greater and greater pain of the stone. I stayed long and drank with them, and so home and to bed. My wife seemed very pretty to-day, it being the first time I had given her leave to wear a black patch. Fifth, office day. 
Being disappointed of money, we failed of going to Deptford to pay off the Henrietta to-day. Dined at home, and at home all day, and at the office at night, to make up an account of what the debts of nineteen of the twenty-five ships that should have been paid off is increased since the adjournment of the Parliament, they being to sit again to-morrow. This fifth of November is observed exceeding well in the city, and at night great bonfires and fireworks. At night Mr. Moore came and sat with me, and there I took a book, and he did instruct me in many law notions, in which I took great pleasure. To bed. 6. In the morning with Sir W. Batten and Penn by water to Westminster, where at my Lord's I met with Mr. Creed. With him to see my Lord's picture, now almost done, and thence to Westminster Hall, where we found the Parliament met to-day, and thence meeting with Mr. Chetwin. I took them to the Sun, and did give them a barrel of oysters, and had good discourse. Among other things, Mr. Chetwin told me how he did fear that this late business of the Duke of York's would prove fatal to my Lord Chancellor. From thence Mr. Creed and I to Wilkinson's, and dined together, and in great haste thence to our office, where we met all, for the sale of two ships by an inch of candle, the first time that ever I saw any of this kind, where I observed how they do invite one another, and at last how they all do cry, and we have much to do to tell who did cry last. The ships were the Indian, sold for thirteen hundred pounds, and the Half Moon, sold for eight hundred and thirty pounds. Home, and fell a reading of the trials of the late men that were hanged for the king's death, and found good satisfaction in reading thereof. At night to bed, and my wife and I did fall out about the dogs being put down into the cellar, which I had a mind to have done because of his fouling the house, and I would have my will, and so we went to bed, and lay all night in a quarrel. This night I was troubled all night with a dream that my wife was dead, which made me that I slept ill all night. 7th Office Day This day my father came to dine at my house. But being sent for in the morning I could not stay, but went by water to my lord, where I dined with him, and he in a very merry humour, present Mr. Borfett and child, at dinner, he, in discourse of the great opinion of the virtue, gratitude, which he did account the greatest thing in the world to him, and had therefore in his mind been often troubled in the late times how to answer his gratitude to the king, who raised his father, did say it was that did bring him to his obedience to the king, and did also bless himself with his good fortune, in comparison to what it was when I was with him in the sound, when he does not own his correspondence with the king, which is a thing that I never did hear of to this day before and I do from this raise an opinion of him, to be one of the most secret men in the world, which I was not so convinced of before. After dinner he bid all go out of the room, and did tell me how the king had promised him four thousand pounds per annum for ever, and had already given him a bill under his hand, which he showed me, for four thousand pounds at Mr. Fox's to pay him. My lord did advise with me how to get this received, and to put out three thousand pounds into safe hands at use, and the other he will make use of for his present occasion. This he did advise with me about— with much secrecy. After all this he called for the fiddles and books, and we too, and W. Howe, and Mr. Child, did sing and play some psalms of Will Laws, and some songs, and so I went away. So I went to see my Lord's picture, which is almost done, and do please me very well, hence to Whitehall to find out Mr. Fox, which I did, and did use me very civilly, but I did not see his lady, whom I had so long known when she was a maid, Mrs. Whittle. From thence meeting my father Bowyer, I took him to Mr. Harper's, and there drank with him. Among other things in discourse, he told me how my wife's brother had a horse at grass with him, which I was troubled to hear, it being his boldness upon my score. Home by coach, and read late in the last night's book of trials, and told my wife about her brother's horse at Mr. Bowyer's, who is also much trouble for it, and do intend to go to-morrow to inquire the truth. Notwithstanding, this was the first day of the King's proclamation against Hackney coaches coming into the streets to stand to be hired, yet I got one to carry me home. 8th. This morning Sir William and the Treasurer and I went by barge with Sir William Doyley and Mr. Prynne to Deptford to pay off the Henrietta, and had a good dinner. I went to Mr. Davis and saw his house, where I was once before a great while ago, and I found him a very pretty man. In the afternoon Commissioner Pett and I went on board the yacht, which indeed is one of the finest things that ever I saw for neatness and room in so small a vessel. Mr. Pett is to make one to outdo this for the honour of his country, which I fear he will scarce better. From thence with him as far as Ratcliffe, where I left him going by water to London, and I, unwilling to leave the rest of the officers, went back again to Deptford, and being very much troubled with the sudden looseness, I went into a little alehouse at the end of Ratcliffe, and did give a groat for a pot of ale, and there I did. So went forward in my walk with some men that were going that way a great pace, and in our way we met with many merry seamen that had got their money paid them to-day. We sat very late doing the work and waiting for the tide. 
it being moonshine we got to london before two in the morning so home where i found my wife up she shewed me her head which was very well dressed to-day she having been to see her father and mother so to bed ninth lay long in bed this morning though an office day because of our going to bed late last night before i went to my office mr creed came to me about business and also mr carter my old cambridge friend came to give me a visit and i did give them a morning draught in my study so to the office and from thence to dinner with mr wivell at the hoop tavern where we had mr shepley talbot adams mr chaplin and osborne and our dinner given us by mr adie and another mr wine the king's fishmonger good sport with mr talbot who eats no sort of fish and there was nothing else till we sent for a neat's tongue from thence to whitehall where i found my lord who had an organ set up to-day in his dining-room but it seems an ugly one in the form of bridewell thence i went to sir harry wright's where my lord was busy at cards and so i stayed below with mrs carter and evans who did give me a lesson upon the lute till he came down and having talked with him at the door about his late business of money i went to my father's and stayed late talking with my father about my sister paul's coming to live with me if she would come and be as a servant which my wife did seem to be pretty willing to do to-day and he seems to take it very well and intends to consider of it home and to bed tenth up early sir william batten and i to make up an account of the wages of the officers and mariners at sea ready to present to the committee of parliament this afternoon afterwards came the treasurer and comptroller and sat all the morning with us till the business was done so we broke up leaving the thing to be wrote over fair and carried to trinity house for sir william batten's hand when staying very long i found as appointed the treasurer and comptroller at whitehall and so we went with a foul copy to the parliament house where we met with sir thomas clarges and mr spry and after we had given them good satisfaction we parted the comptroller and i to the coffee-house where he shewed me the state of his case how the king did owe him about six thousand pounds but i do not see great likelihood for them to be paid since they begin already in parliament to dispute the paying of the just sea debts which were already promised to be paid and will be the undoing of thousands if they be not paid so to whitehall to look but could not find mr fox and then to mr moore at mr crew's but missed of him also so to paul's churchyard and there bought montelion which this year do not prove so good as the last was so after reading it i burnt it after reading of that and the comedy of the rump which is also very silly i went to bed this night going home will and i bought a goose eleventh lord's day this morning i went to sir w batten's about going to deptford to-morrow and so eating some hog's pudding of my lady's making of the hog that i saw fattening the other day at her house he and i went to church into our new gallery the first time it was used and it not being yet quite finished there came after us sir w pen mr davis and his eldest son there being no woman this day we sat in the foremost pew and behind us our servants and i hope it will not always be so it not being handsome for our servants to sit so equal with us this day also did mr mills begin to read all the common prayer which i was glad of home to dinner and then walked to whitehall it being very cold and foul in rainy weather i found my lord at home and after giving him an account of some business i returned and went to my father's where i found my wife and there we supped and dr thomas pepys who my wife told me after i was come home that he had told my brother thomas that he loved my wife so well that if she had a child he would never marry but leave all that he had to my child and after supper we walked home my little boy carrying a link and will leading my wife so home and to prayers and to bed i should have said that before i got to my lord's this day i went to mr fox's at whitehall when i first saw his lady formerly mrs elizabeth whittle whom i had formerly a great opinion of and did make an anagram or two upon her name when i was a boy she proves a very fine lady a mother to fine children to-day i agreed with mr fox about my taking of the four thousand pounds of him that the king had given my lord twelfth lay long in bed to-day sir william barton went this morning to deptford to pay off the wolf and mr comptroller and i sat a while at the office to do business and thence i went with him to his house in lime street a fine house and where i never was before and from thence by coach setting down his sister at the new exchange to westminster hall where first i met with jack spicer and agreed with him to help me to tell money this afternoon hence to decret's where i saw my lord's picture finished which do please me very well so back to the hall where by appointment i met the comptroller and with him and three or four parliament men i dined at heaven and after dinner called at will's on jack spicer and took him to mr fox's who saved me the labour of telling me the money by giving me three thousand pounds by consent the other thousand pounds i am to have on thursday next which i carried by coach to the exchequer and put it up in a chest in spicer's office 
From thence walked to my father's, where I found my wife, who had been with my father to-day, buying of a tablecloth and a dozen of napkins of diaper, the first that have I bought in my life. My father and I took occasion to go forth, and went and drank at Mr. Standing's, and there discoursed seriously about my sister's coming to live with me, which I have much mind for her good to have, and yet I am much afeard of her ill-nature. Coming home again, he and I, and my wife, my mother, and Paul, went all together into the little room, and there I told her plainly what my mind was, to have her come not as a sister in any respect, but as a servant, which she promised me that she would, and with many thanks did weep for joy, which did give me and my wife some content and satisfaction. So by coach home and to bed. The last night I should have mentioned how my wife and I were troubled all night, with the sound of drums in our ears, which in the morning we found to be Mr. Davis's Jack. But not knowing the cause of its going all night, I understand to-day that they have had a great feast to-day. 13th. Early going to my lord's, I met with Mr. Moore, who was going to my house, and indeed I found him to be a most careful, painful, and able man in business, and took him by water to the wardrobe, and shewed him all the house, and indeed there is a great deal of room in it, but very ugly, till my lord hath bestowed great cost upon it. So to the exchequer, and there took Spicer and his fellow clerks to the dog tavern, and did give them a peck of oysters, and so home to dinner, where I found my wife making of pies and tarts to try her oven with, which she has never yet done, but not knowing the nature of it, did heat it too hot, and so a little over-bake her things, but knows how to do better another time. At home all the afternoon, at night made up my accounts of my sea expenses, in order to my clearing off my impress bill of thirty pounds, which I had in my hands at the beginning of my voyage, which I intend to shew to my lord to-morrow. To bed. Fourteenth, office day. But this day was the first that we do begin to sit in the afternoon, and not in the forenoon, and therefore I went into Cheapside to Mr. Beecham's the goldsmith, to look out a piece of plate to give Mr. Fox from my lord, for his favour about the four thousand pounds, and did choose a gilt tankard. So to Paul Churchyard, and bought Cornelianum Dolium. So home to dinner, and after that to the office till late at night, and so Sir W. Penn the Comptroller and I to the Dolphin, where we found Sir W. Batten, who is seldom a night from hence, and there we did drink a great quantity of sack, and did tell many merry stories, and in good humours we were all. So home and to bed. Fifteenth to Westminster. And it being very cold upon the water, I went all alone to the sun, and drank a draught of mulled white wine, and so to Mr. de Cretz, whither I sent for J. Spicer, to appoint him to expect me this afternoon at the office, with the other thousand pounds from Whitehall. And here we stayed, and did see him give some finishing touches to my lord's picture. So at last it is complete to my mind, and I leave mine with him to copy out another for himself, and took the original by a porter with me to my lord's, where I found my lord within, and stayed hearing him and Mr. Child playing upon my lord's new organ, the first time I ever heard it. My lord did this day show me the king's picture, which was done in Flanders, that the king did promise my lord before he ever saw him, and that we did expect to have had at sea before the king came to us. But it came but to-day, and indeed it is the most pleasant and the most like him that have I saw picture in my life. As dinner was coming on table, my wife came to my lord's, and I got her carried in to my lady, who took physic to-day, and was just now hiring of a French maid that was with her, and they could not understand one another till my wife came to interpret. Here I did leave my wife to dine with my lord the first time he ever did take notice of her as my wife, and did seem to have a just esteem for her, and did myself walk homewards, hearing that Sir W. Penn was gone before in a coach, to overtake him, and with much ado at last did in Fleet Street, and there I went into him, and there was Sir Arnold Brames, and we all three to Sir W. Batten's to dinner, he having a couple of servants married to-day, and so there was a great number of merchants and others of good quality on purpose after dinner, to make an offering, which when dinner was done we did, and I did give ten shillings and no more, though I believe most of the rest did give more, and did believe that I did so too. From thence to Whitehall again by water to Mr. Fox, and by two porters carried away the other thousand pounds. He was not within himself, but I had it of his kinsman, and did give him four pounds, and other servants something, but whereas I did intend to have given Mr. Fox himself a piece of plate of fifty pounds, I was demanded a hundred pounds for the fee of the office at six pence a pound, at which I was surprised. But, however, I did leave it there till I speak with my lord. So I carried it to the exchequer, where at Wills I found Mr. Spicer, and so lodged it at his office with the rest. From thence, after a pot of ale at Wills, I took boat in the dark, and went for all that to the old swan, and so to Sir William Batten's, and leaving some of the gallants at cards, I went home where I found my wife much satisfied with my lord's discourse and respect to her, and so after prayers to bed. Sixteenth. 
up early to my father's where by appointment mr moore came to me and he and i to the temple and thence to westminster hall to speak with mr william montague about his looking upon the title of those lands which i do take as security for three thousand pounds of my lord's money that being done mr moore and i parted and in the hall i met with mr fauntleroy my old acquaintance whom i had not seen a long time and he and i to the swan and in discourse he seems to be wise and say little though i know things are changed against his mind thence home by water where my father mr snow and mr moore did dine with me after dinner mr snow and i went up together to discourse about the putting out of eighty pounds to a man who lacks the money and would give me fifteen pounds per annum for eight years for it which i did not think profit enough and so he seemed to be disappointed by my refusal of it but i would not now part with my money easily he seems to do it as a great favour to me to offer to come in upon a way of getting of money which they call bottomry which i do not yet understand but do believe there may be something in it of great profit after we were parted i went to the office and there we sat all the afternoon and at night we went to a barrel of oysters at sir w batten's and so home and i to the setting of my papers in order which did keep me up late so to bed seventeen in the morning to whitehall where i inquired at the privy seal office for a form for a nobleman to make one his chaplain but i understanding that there is not any i did draw upon and so to my lord's and there i did give him it to sign for mr turner to be his first chaplain i did likewise get my lord to sign my last sea accounts so that i am even to this day when i have received the balance of mr creed i dined with my lady and my lady pickering where her son john dined with us who do continue a fool as he ever was since i knew him his mother would fain marry him to get a portion for his sister betty but he will not hear of it hither came major hart this noon who tells me that the regiment is now disbanded and that there is some money coming to me for it i took him to my lord to mr crew's and from thence with mr shepley and mr moore to the devil tavern and there we drank so home and wrote letters by the post then to my lyra vile and to bed eighteenth lord's day in the morning to our own church where mr powell a crook legged man that went formerly with me to paul's school preached a good sermon in the afternoon to our own church and my wife with me the first time that she and my lady batten came to sit in our new pew and after sermon my lady took us home and there we supped with her and sir w batten and pen and were much made of the first time that ever my wife was there so home and to bed nineteenth office day after we had done a little at the office this morning i went with the treasurer in his coach to whitehall and in our way in discourse to find him a very good-natured man and talking of those men who now stand condemned for murdering the king he says that he believes that if the law would give leave the king is a man of so great compassion that he would wholly acquit them going to my lord's i met with mr shepley and so he and i to the sun and i did give him a morning draught of muscadine and so to see my lord's picture at decret's and he says it is very like him and i say so too after that to westminster hall and there hearing that sir w batten was at the leg in the palace i went thither and there dined with him and some of the trinity housemen who had obtained something to-day at the house of lords concerning the ballast office after dinner i went by water to london to the globe in cornhill and there did choose two pictures to hang up in my house which my wife did not like when i came home and so i sent the picture of paris back again to the office where we sat all the afternoon till night so home and there came mr beecham to me with the gilt tankard and i did pay him for it twenty pounds so to my music and sat up late at it and so to bed leaving my wife to sit up till two o'clock that she may call the wench up to wash twentieth about two o'clock my wife wakes me and comes to bed and so both to sleep and the wench to wash i rose and with will to my lord's by land it being a very hard frost the first we have had this year there i stayed with my lord and mr shepley looking over my lord's accounts and to set matters straight between him and shepley and he did commit the viewing of these accounts to me which was a great joy to me to see that my lord do look upon me as one to put trust in hence to the organ where mr child and one mr mackworth who plays finely upon the violin were playing and so we played till dinner and then dined where my lord in a very good humour and kind to me after dinner to the temple where i met mr moore and discoursed with him about the business of putting out my lord's three thousand pounds and that done mr shepley and i to the new playhouse near lincoln's inn fields which was formerly gibbon's tennis court where the play of beggar's bush was newly begun and so we went in and saw it it was well acted and here i saw for the first time one moon who is said to be the best actor in the world lately come over with the king and indeed it is the finest playhouse i believe that ever was in england from thence after a pot of ale with mr shepley at a house hard by i went by link home calling a little by the way at my father's 
and my uncle Fenner's were all pretty well, and so home, where I found the house in a washing pickle, and my wife in a very joyful condition, when I told her that she is to see the Queen next Thursday, which puts me in mind to say that this morning I found my lord in bed late, he having been with the King, Queen, and Princess at the cockpit, all night, where General Monk treated them, and after supper a play, where the King did put a great affront upon Singleton's music, he bidding them stop and bade the French music play, which, my lord says, do much outdo all ours. But while my lord was rising, I went to Mr. Fox's, and there did leave the gilt tankard for Mrs. Fox, and then to the counting-house to him, who hath invited me and my wife to dine with him on Thursday next, and so to see the Queen and Princesses. Twenty-first, lay long in bed. This morning my cousin Thomas Pepys, the turner, sent me a cup of lignum vitae, for a token. This morning my wife and I went to Paternoster Row, and there we bought some green-watered moira for a morning waistcoat, and after that we went to Mr. Cade's to choose some pictures for our house. After that my wife went home, and I to Pope's Head, and bought me an agate-hafted knife, which cost me five shillings. So home to dinner, and so to the office all the afternoon, and at night to my violin, the first time that I played on it since I came to this house, in my dining-room, and afterwards to my lute there, and I took much pleasure to have the neighbours come forth into the yard to hear me. So down to supper, and sent for the barber, who stayed so long with me, that he was locked into the house, and we were fain to call up Griffith to let him out. So up to bed, leaving my wife to wash herself, and to do other things against to-morrow to go to court. 22nd. This morning came the carpenters to make me a door at the other side of my house, going into the entry, which I was much pleased with. At noon my wife and I walked to the old exchange, and there she bought her a white whisk, and put it on, and I a pair of gloves, and so we took coach for Whitehall, to Mr. Fox's, where we found Mrs. Fox within, and an alderman of London paying a thousand pounds, or fifteen hundred pounds in gold upon the table for the king, which was the most gold that ever I saw together in my life. Mr. Fox came in presently, and did receive us with a great deal of respect, and then did take my wife and I to the Queen's presence chamber, where he got my wife placed behind the Queen's chair, and I got into the crowd, and by and by the Queen and the two princesses came to dinner. The Queen, a very little plain old woman, and nothing more in her presence, in any respect nor garb than any ordinary woman. The Princess of Orange I had often seen before. The Princess Henrietta is very pretty, but much below my expectation, and her dressing of herself with her hair frizzed short up to her ears, did make her seem so much the less to me. But my wife standing near her with two or three black patches on and well dressed, did seem to me much handsomer than she. Dinner being done, we went to Mr. Fox's again, where many gentlemen dined with us, a most princely dinner, all provided for me and my friends, but I bringing none but myself and wife, he did call the company to help to eat up so much good victuals. At the end of dinner my Lord Sandwich's health was drunk, in the gilt tankard that I did give to Mrs. Fox the other day. After dinner I had notice given me by will, my man, that my lord did inquire for me, so I went to find him, and met him and the Duke of York in a coach going towards Charing Cross. I endeavoured to follow them, but could not, so I returned to Mr. Fox, and after much kindness and good discourse we parted from thence. I took coach for my wife and me homewards, and I light at the maypole in the strand, and sent my wife home. I to the new playhouse, and saw part of the traitor, a very good tragedy. Mr. Moon did act the traitor very well. So to my lord's, and sat there with my lady a great while talking. Among other things, she took occasion to inquire, by Madame Dury's late discourse with her, how I did treat my wife's father and mother, at which I did give her a good account, and she seemed to be very well opinioned of my wife. From thence to Whitehall at about nine at night, and there, with Lord the Page that went with me, we could not get out of Henry the Eighth's gallery into the further part of the boarded gallery, where my lord was walking with my lord Ormond, and we had a key of Sir S. Morland's, but all would not do. Till at last by knocking, Mr. Harris and the doorkeeper did open us the door and after some talk with my lord about getting a catch to carry my lord St. Albans a goods to France, I parted and went home on foot, it being very late and dirty, and so weary to bed. 23rd. This morning standing, looking upon the workmen doing of my new door to my house, there comes Captain Strawn the Scot, to whom the king has given half of the money that the two ships lately sold to bring, and he would needs take me to the dolphin and give me a glass of ale and a peck of oysters, he and I. He did talk much what he is able to advise the king for good husbandry in his ships, as by ballasting them with lead ore and many other tricks. But I do believe that he is a knowing man in sea business. Home and dined, and in the afternoon to the office, where till late. And that being done, Mr. Creed did come to speak with me, and I took him to the Dolphin, where there was Mr. Pierce the purser, and his wife, and some friends of theirs. So I did spend a crown upon them behind the bar, they being akin to the people of the house, and this being the house where Mr. Pierce was apprentice. 
after they were gone mr creed and i spent an hour in looking over the account which he do intend to pass in our office for his lending monies which i did advise about and approve or disapprove of as i saw cause after an hour being serious at this we parted about eleven o'clock at night so i home and to bed leaving my wife and the maid at their linen to get up twenty fourth to my lord's where after i had done talking with him mr townsend rumble blackburn creed and shepley and i to the rhenish wine-house and there i did give them two quarts of wormwood wine and so we broke up so we parted and i and mr creed to westminster hall and looked over a book or two and so to my lord's where i dined with my lady there being mr child and mrs borfoot who are never absent at dinner there under pretence of a wooing from thence i to mr de Cretz, and did take away my lord's picture which is now finished for me and i paid three pounds ten shillings for it and the frame and am well pleased with it and the price so carried it home by water will being with me at home and had a fire made in my closet and put my papers and books and things in order and that being done i fell to entering these two good songs of mr law's help help o help and o god of heaven and hell in my song-book to which i have got mr child to set the base to the theorbo and that done to bed twenty fifth lord's day in the forenoon i alone to our church and after dinner i went and ranged about to many churches among the rest to the temple where i heard dr wilkins a little late master of trinity in cambridge that being done to my father's to see my mother who is troubled much with the stone and that being done i went home where i had a letter brought me for my lord to get a ship ready to carry the queen's things over to france she being to go within five or six days so to supper and to bed twenty sixth office day to it all the morning and dine at home where my father come and dined with me who seems to take much pleasure to have a son that is neat in his house i being now making my new door into the entry which he do please himself much with after dinner to the office again and there till night and that being done the comptroller and i to the mitre to a glass of wine when we fell into a discourse of poetry and he did repeat some verses of his own making which were very good home there hear that my lady batten had given my wife a visit the first that ever she made her which pleased me exceedingly so after supper to bed twenty seventh to whitehall where i found my lord gone abroad to the wardrobe whither he do now go every other morning and do seem to resolve to understand and look after the business himself from thence to westminster hall and in king street there being a great stop of coaches there was a falling out between a drayman and my lord chesterfield's coachman and one of his footmen killed at the hall i met with mr creed and he and i to hell to drink our morning draught and so to my lord's again where i found my wife and she and i dined with him and my lady and great company of my lord's friends and my lord did show us great respect soon as dinner was done my wife took her leave and went with mr blackburn and his wife to london to a christening of a brother's child of his on tower hill and i to a play the scornful lady and that being done i went homewards and met mr moore who had been at my house and took him to my father's and we three to standings to drink here mr moore told me how the house had this day voted the king to have all the excise for ever this day i do also hear that the queen's going to france is stopped which do like me well because then the king will be in town the next month which is my month again at the privy seal from thence home where when i come i do remember that i did leave my boy wainman at whitehall with order to stay there for me in the court at which i was much troubled but about eleven o'clock at night the boy came home well and so we all to bed twenty eighth this morning went to whitehall to my lord's where major hart did pay me twenty three pounds fourteen shillings ninepence due to me upon my pay in my lord's troop at the time of our disbanding which is a great blessing to have without taking any law in the world for but now i must put an end to any hopes of getting any more so that i bless god for this from thence with mr shepley and pinkney to the sun and did give them a glass of wine and a peck of oysters for joy of my getting this money so home where i found that mr creed had sent me the eleven pounds five shillings that is due to me upon the remains of account for my sea business which is also so much clear money to me and my bill of impress for thirty pounds is also cleared so that i am wholly clear as to the sea in all respects to the office and was there till late at night and among the officers to hear that they may have our salaries allowed by the treasurer which do make me very glad and praise god for it home to supper and mr hater supped with me whom i did give order to take up my money of the treasurer to-morrow if it can be had so to bed twenty ninth in the morning seeing a great deal of foul water come into my parlour from under the partition between me and mr davis i did step thither to him and tell him of it and he did seem very ready to have it stopped and did also tell me how thieves did attempt to rob his house last night which do make us all afraid this noon i being troubled that the workmen that i have to do my door were called to mr davis's away i sent for them 
where Mr. Davis sent to inquire a reason of, and I did give him a good one, that they were come on purpose to do some work with me that they had already begun, with which he was well pleased, and I glad, being unwilling to anger them. In the afternoon Sir W. Batten and I met, and did sell the ship Church for four hundred and forty pounds, and we asked three hundred and ninety-one pounds, and that being done I went home, and Dr. Petty came to me about Mr. Barlow's money, and I being a little troubled to be so importune before I had received it, and that they would have it stopped in Mr. Fenn's hands, I did force the doctor to go fetch the letter of attorney that he had to receive it, only to make him some labour, which he did bring, and Mr. Hales came along with him from the treasury, with my money for the first quarter, Michaelmas last, that ever I received for this employment. So I paid the doctor twenty five pounds, and had sixty two pounds ten shillings for myself, and seven pounds ten shillings to myself also for Will's salary, which I do intend yet to keep for myself. With this my heart is much rejoiced, and do bless Almighty God, that he is pleased to send so sudden and unexpected payment of my salary, so soon after my great disbursements, so that now I am worth two hundred pounds again. In a great ease of mind and spirit I fell about the auditing of Mr. Shepley's last accounts with my lord, by my lord's desire, and about that I sat till twelve o'clock at night, till I began to doze, and so to bed, with my heart praising God for his mercy to us. Thirtieth, office day. To the office, where Sir G. Carteret did give us an account, how Mr. Holland do intend to prevail with the Parliament, to try his project of discharging the seamen all at present by ticket, and so promise interest to all men that will lend money upon them at eight per cent for so long as they are unpaid, whereby he do think to take away the growing debt, which do now lie upon the kingdom for lack of present money, to discharge the seamen. But this we are troubled at, as some diminution to us. I having two barrels of oysters at home, I caused one of them and some wine to be brought to the inner room in the office, and there the principal officers did go and eat them. So we sat till noon, and then to dinner, and to it again in the afternoon till night. At home I sent for Mr. Hayter, and broke the other barrel with him, and did afterwards sit down discoursing of sea terms to learn of him, and he being gone I went up and sat till twelve at night again, to make an end of my lord's accounts, as I did the last night, which at last I made a good end of, and so to bed. End of November